If you believe in traditional marriage and historic Christianity, watch out. There's a powerful organization trying to marginalize you by designating you as a hater. And they could even put your life in danger. Who is this group and how are they working to silence you? Find out on this special program. The Southern Poverty Law Center is redefining what hate is. The SPLC gave rise and gave fuel uh, to the actions of this domestic terrorist. Southern Poverty Law Center is not a neutral, reliable source on hate. The Southern Poverty Law Center is irresponsible and reckless, and frankly, it results in putting people's lives in danger. Welcome to the special program, Prophets of Hate, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Some remember that the Southern Poverty Law Center once did some good work in the waning days of the civil rights movement. But today, they have enlisted in the culture wars on the side of the radical left and have made enormous profits in the process. Yet this radical group is taken seriously by the media educational institutions, and even law enforcement, while demonizing those who hold traditional Christian beliefs on marriage and sexuality as so-called hate groups, including this ministry, by the way. As we begin, we look at one case in which their designation led to frightening and potentially deadly consequences. August 15, 2012, Floyd Lee Corkins walked into the lobby of the Family Research Council. Uh, Leo Johnson, who was our building manager, was uh, manning the front desk at that time and asked for some identification. This man, Mr. Corkins, reached into his backpack and instead of pulling out identification, he pulled out a gun, which he aimed at Leo and fired. Leo was wounded in the arm. Leo wrestled him to the ground with one good arm took his pistol away from him and started to shoot him. Uh, and then Leo told us later that God told him not to shoot Floyd Lee Corkins. The FBI agent told me that his courageous, bold response saved many lives that day. The would-be shooter had a backpack with 100 rounds of ammunition and 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. So he had intended to kill as many people as he could and then smear Chick-fil-A sandwiches in their faces uh, that day on August the 15th. So this was two weeks after the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day that some people may recall when there was such a turnout across the country of support for Chick-fil-A uh, because of their support for marriage. What he objected to was our stand on traditional marriage. We had said that marriage is the institution between a man and a woman, and he uh, was a volunteer for a local LGBT organization. Uh, how did we respond to a man who came in to terrorize our building, who has since pleaded guilty to terrorism? Well, we've prayed for him. We prayed that he might come to a, uh, an understanding of the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Floyd Corkins was convicted of an act of domestic terrorism. This is the first terrorism conviction in the District of Columbia since uh, the, the law was enacted after 9-11. When he was interrogated by the FBI, they asked him, how did you pick your um, target? Now, how did you, this building, this organization, did you, did you, how did you find it? Or did you like look it up online or how did you know about it? They uh, Southern Poverty Law lists uh, anti-gay groups like not online. Southern Poverty Law Center is reckless in labeling groups as hate groups or labeling individuals as hate mongers, and they do both. They have no authority to do so. The Southern Poverty Law Center needs to realize that they have blood on their hands. And um, it's not that they can't criticize us, we can take criticism, but the hate label is a slander, and it is an irresponsible slander which, in our case, led directly to violence. At the time of the shooting, several dozen homosexual groups denounced the violence. 
but there was never an apology from the Southern Poverty Law Center. I can assure you if a, someone who had once attended a Sunday school class had gone into an, a, a gay and lesbian organization and a, attempted to do what Mr. Corkins attempted to do in our building, we would still be hearing about it. Meanwhile, Family Research Council's name is still listed on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map. So also is that of D. James Kennedy Ministries, because we proclaim what the Bible says about marriage and sexuality. Supposedly, we're also a hate group, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're a very dangerous organization. Not only dangerous from a standpoint that they inspired a gunman to come into our building, but dangerous because they are ready and willing and working to dispose of our First Amendment, and that is dangerous. We thank God that no one was killed in that incident, largely due to the heroic actions of that brave building manager who was shot defending his colleagues. Later in this program, we'll provide an update on him. Yet despite the explicit admission of the shooter, Floyd Corkins, that he was inspired by the Southern Poverty Law Center's so-called hate map, the SPLC has never apologized for what happened, nor have they removed the Family Research Council, D. James Kennedy Ministries, or many other like-minded groups from their hate map. More recently, a conservative congressman and three other people were shot by a man who, like Floyd Corkins, was a fan of the SPLC and had endorsed their page on Facebook. Yet their irresponsible and inaccurate rhetoric continues unabated. Just what is the Southern Poverty Law Center and why is it doing these things? Dr. Jerry Newcomb takes a closer look. I have a dream. The Southern Poverty Law Center is an organization that began back during the civil rights era um, in part to protect the rights of those who were being unjustly treated uh, in response to um, the resistance to um, Jim Crow laws. So what we see is an organization that had some ostensible good, that is, they were protecting people who were taking a stand for their God-given rights. But it didn't continue that way. Instead, the SPLC enlisted in the culture wars on the side of the radical left. However, what we have today is an organization that in continuing its uh, mission has lost sight of some of the key principles that motivated, in particular, um, the Southern Christian leaders, the ministers, who were fighting for our unalienable rights. In his classic letter from the Birmingham jail, Dr. King wrote, quote, a just law is a man-made code that squares with the moral law of God. An unjust law is a code that is out of harmony with the moral law. An unjust law is a human law that is not rooted in eternal law and natural law. Martin Luther King Jr. often preached upon the fact that the, the impetus, the energy behind what they were doing in fighting for the civil rights of basically my dad's generation uh, was grounded in God's Word, in the truth of God's Word. The Southern Poverty Law Center is continuing to operate off of a reputation of the past in which they were focused on racist organizations. The name of the Southern Poverty Law Center is a little deceptive because the only thing impoverished about the Southern Poverty Law Center are their ethics. What they do is they simply go after and try to marginalize Christian organizations that speak about biblical morality. And they do nothing to help uh, those who are poor in the South. In fact, one particular case uh, was a, a woman whose son had been beaten to death uh, by the KKK. Morris Dees went in there, won the case. The woman got $54,000 as a result of the case, but Morris Dees ended up raising $9 million for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, she did not get any of that uh, you know, benefit to the Southern Poverty Law Center. They had made their money 
through mail fundraising and Morris was able to continue that with the Southern Poverty Law Center to create just a huge foundational uh, amount of money that they have been able to squirrel away overseas while they continue to purport to represent those in poverty and in need. This is an organization that has a massive endowment of uh, I think $300 million. Much of it is uh, kept offshore in offshore accounts in the Cayman Islands and so forth. Uh, and yet they, uh, they exploit people, small donors and so forth, asking for money that they don't need in order to do things that are, uh, that are disingenuous, that are not actually uh, helping homosexuals, but simply um, attacking uh, people who they happen to disagree with ideologically. Yeah, no, they pay like, you know, over $300,000 um, for, you know, for their, for, for their top salaries. And of course, and Deese himself lives in a palace in a suburb of Montgomery, in a wealthy suburb. The Southern Poverty Law Center is redefining what hate is. It's, it's doing so first to raise money, and secondly, it's doing it in order to shut down all contrary opinion, which the First Amendment was designed to protect. With an original mission of opposing groups like the KKK, the Southern Poverty Law Center did some good work decades ago, targeting lingering racism. But as the Klan diminished, the SPLC needed to find other ways to keep the donations flowing in. They have done this by designating traditional evangelical organizations like us as hate groups and plotting them on their so-called hate map and thereby designating them as extremists. There you will find Klansman and white supremacist David Duke standing right alongside evangelical Christian historian David Barton. It is a modern form of insanity that anyone would believe this but the SPLC has found it profitable to scare up money from Northeastern liberals who have no first-hand acquaintance with any actual evangelical Christians. And because corporations, law enforcement, and the media are taking them seriously, we've filed a lawsuit against them for their falsehood. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb has more. The Southern Poverty Law Center has a wonderful public relations operation where they have been able to sell themselves to the media, to the decision makers. Uh, they are using the huge wealth that they are receiving through their mail fundraising operation to promote themselves so they then can sell this message that they are trying to implant in the minds of Americans to turn Americans against traditional values, against our Christian heritage. During the 2000s, they've kind of morphed into a hate group watch. And that's essentially where all the action is now. They are doing a profound disservice, uh, both to the public at large and specifically to those in the charitable world or in the press or in government who need to have access to the kind of information that I believe uh, people like us provide. That is the crux of the matter. Critics of the Southern Poverty Law Center argue that they paint with too broad a brush in their labeling of various groups and individuals as haters. Therefore, legitimate Christian ministries that simply hold to traditional Christian doctrine on issues of sex and gender, for example, end up with the same hate label as the KKK, neo-Nazis, and armed militias. And D. James Kennedy Ministries has also been falsely placed on the SPLC's so-called hate map, but the ministry is pushing back against the slander. On behalf of D. James Kennedy Ministries, we have filed a lawsuit in federal court in the state of Alabama, um, protecting not just the rights of this ministry, but the rights of all ministries and concerned citizens that want to be able to freely speak their faith. Southern Poverty Law Center has the right to speak. They don't have the right to libel, slander, or defame. 
And there is a difference between speaking openly and honestly in the marketplace of ideas and destroying wrongfully the reputation of an innocent party. Other defendants in the lawsuit are Amazon.com, whose Amazon Smile charity program excluded D. James Kennedy Ministries because of the SPLC's false hate designation. It's our opinion that Amazon and any other entity that relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map is acting irresponsibly. We believe that while they may have stood for some good things in the past, what they're doing with their hate map towards ministries like D. James Kennedy Ministries is absolutely wrong and they should be held responsible and that's what we hope to have before a jury in Alabama. Matt Staver's Liberty Council has also falsely been placed on the SPLC's hate map. It's irresponsible and reckless to label someone with whom you disagree as a hater or a hate group, put them in the same category as the, the KKK or the Aryan Nation. We can have disagreement all day long. Do it respectfully, do it politely. We're not gonna necessarily see on the same page. That's fine, but don't put people in harm's way intentionally. We believe that organizations should be free in this country, just like our founders did, to talk about marriage, the definition of marriage, what the Bible teaches, to share their faith without being lamb-blasted and even subjected to incredible economic and personal ridicule in this country. And this is an opportunity for those that are concerned about many that are taking what we'd call Silicon Valley values or even Hollywood values and forcing them on the country. In America, we are free to disagree with each other. Our founders gave us the First Amendment to ensure healthy and robust debate. But in today's radicalization of culture, we find liberal voices saying things like, hate speech is not protected by the First Amendment. That is, of course, patently false, but it has proven to be a useful tool on the left for silencing opposition rather than convincing people in the court of public opinion. Tragically, as the Southern Poverty Law Center fills its overflowing coffers by labeling Bible-believing Christians alongside neo-Nazis and the Klan, there are real-life consequences to this falsehood. We began this program by showing you the attack on the Family Research Council which was directly linked to the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map. Here is an update on that story five years later. There's still evidence of the violence that was perpetuated on that day. There are bullet holes uh, that are reminders of what our vulnerability was uh, on, on that day. Uh, and we are now sending out a clarion call to, to others, uh, to, to be prepared, uh, but to be fearless. The assault against the Family Research Council was in August 2012. In September 2013, the perpetrator, Floyd Corkins II, was convicted and sentenced to prison for 25 years. After that sentencing, the FRC's Tony Perkins and Leo Johnson, who was shot in the attack, held a press conference. Uh, we hold no animosity toward Mr. Corkins. I was very pleased with the judge's sentence today. I think justice was served. And, um, it was a very tragic situation that would have been a lot worse had I not intervened. I uh, just give all praise to God. Leo Johnson paid a, a tremendous price for his heroics on that day in 2012, whether it's been the disruption of his, his life or the disruption in the care that he provides his mother and his grandmother, uh, there has been a, a, a price. Um, and he paid a price in terms of his own personal health, uh, having to undergo uh, several operations. I am sure Leo probably thought, who would ever think you know, that going to work at a Christian ministry or going to church, one would be jeopardized, their, their health, their, their very lives. Uh, and that's what he experienced on that day. After the courtroom sentencing, shooting victim Leo Johnson was able to address the shooter, Floyd Corkins. I told Mr. Corkins that, you know, although I forgave him, I would never forget because of the, the pain and suffering that myself and my family have to go through. This man now is serving time in a federal prison. 
But it wasn't just FRC that he was planning to commit mass murder. It was also two other pro-family organizations that he had on a sheet of paper. And he said that he got that information from the Southern Poverty Law Center. One of those pro-family groups was the Traditional Values Coalition, headed up by Andrea Lafferty. We have staff or interns here. We have people that come and visit, whether they're supporters, members of churches, pastors with children. It could have been a slaughter. If someone had opened the door, we don't have bodyguards with guns. Guns aren't allowed in Washington. I don't know how we could have defended ourselves. God protected us and we're grateful. It is irresponsible for the Southern Poverty Law Center to label organizations and people as haters or hate groups simply because they disagree. Corkins is defined by the FBI as a domestic terrorist. Uh, the SPLC gave rise and gave fuel uh, to the actions of this domestic terrorist. Uh, we have to understand that we now live in a different, more dangerous environment, uh, and it is incumbent upon us uh, to, to, in fact, be prepared. For, for this sort of uh, attack. It's unfortunate that we live in a world where you have to say that to your children or your fellow chur churchgoers, but that's the reality. Ironically, the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map and other broad-based accusations of hate are twisting Martin Luther King's dream into a virtual nightmare. Dr. King believed in moral absolutes. He didn't believe in the advance of moral relativism because he understood that it was only when you have moral absolutes that you had a, a basis to pursue justice and equality for all. And what the Southern Poverty Law Center is doing is the direct opposite of that. They are in fact creating division by the use of moral relativism that is a direct affront to what Dr. King believed. Floyd Corkins is directly linked to the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map. And there's probably going to be more people that are unhinged like him use that same excuse to go out and commit carnage against people simply because they believe in marriage as the union of a man and woman. The SPLC has to understand is that it has created a noose of hate that is choking off real debate in America they need to do some soul searching and say enough is enough and retreat from that sort of behavior. The shooting at the Family Research Council, which was successfully prosecuted as a terror attack, was a direct result of the Southern Poverty Law Center's dishonesty and slander. And finally, the SPLC is being called to account for their falsehoods. We continue to pursue our own lawsuit against them in federal district court for falsely labeling us a hate group and placing us on their so-called hate map. We have included Amazon in the suit for discriminating against us by excluding us from their SMILE charity program solely based on our religious views which also are the basis for the SPLC's defamatory allegation. That suit continues to move forward, and in the meantime, the SPLC recently gave a huge multi-million dollar settlement to the Quilliam Foundation for falsely labeling them as anti-Muslim extremists. They've been falsely labeling groups that oppose their far left bent for years now and people are finally catching on. That's why we're asking for your help in battling them. If you are able to give a donation to help us continue the ongoing work of this ministry and to press this legal fight, we will send you a special DVD copy of this program as our thanks. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. The Southern Poverty Law Center has thrived by stoking fear of so-called hate while dishonestly smearing traditional Christians, among others, in the process. 
Yet, we are one of the first Christian organizations to actually take them to federal court for their dishonesty. Now the gears of justice turn slowly and we need your help to continue this long legal battle. Please stand with us by giving us a generous donation and we will send you a DVD of today's documentary, Prophets of Hate, the Southern Poverty Law Center, featuring expanded content not seen on today's program. This hard-hitting DVD features journalists who have investigated the SPLC for years and uncovered their far-left agenda. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. We are engaged in a, a culture war uh, and the, the, the attack on uh, the Family Research Council, uh, the shooting of Republican legislators in Virginia, those are real wake-up calls. Those underline the, the degree to which we are engaged in a very, very serious time in America. And that's the kind of hate that the SPLC is trafficking in, and it's picked up. It's now, now the SPLC has kind of reinvented itself in recent years because the mainstream media basically likes what it's saying. The Southern Poverty Law Center currently, along with a plethora of other organizations that are advancing immorality and injustice in this land, are all part of what I call the God-hating complex. It's, it's troubling what's happening with the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the only way to combat that is to get out there and expose those people for who they truly are. As president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, I can tell you with absolute conviction that this organization is driven by love, love for the God of the Bible, and love for men and women, boys and girls, who can receive eternal life by turning away from their sins and trusting in Jesus Christ, the only Savior of sinners. By calling our ministry efforts hate, the Southern Poverty Law Center only reveals that their moral compass is fundamentally broken. We are standing against them on behalf of all Bible-believing Christians, filing suit so that Christians will not be silenced by false and defamatory allegations of hate. Thank you for joining us for this special program, Prophets of Hate, the Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm Frank Wright. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.